Clemens, who's the best goalkeeper in the world. There isn't any doubt about that. Houston trying to get there. Oh, what a save! In life, it's great to achieve, but you get nothing for once you've achieved, you've got to go again. And that's the way that dressing room was. It was fantastic. We all finished up with the number of medals we finished up, but we all knew at the start of the next season, we get no praise for that. We had to do it all over again. And it's only when it's all finished and, you know, I look at what I've managed to achieve medal-wise, and I think, yeah, it was a special career for me. Most of us had to take a summer job to get us. So my summer job was working on the deck chairs at Scunthorpe, <laughs> uh, since Skegness. Uh, so I was dishing the uh, deck chairs out, and uh, all of a sudden, somebody came down from the council and said, we've had a phone call from your mother mm. saying Scunthorpe had been on the phone. Um, they've agreed a fee with Liverpool. Do you want to go? I got on my bike, went back to my house, and uh, obviously got onto Scunthorpe and said, yeah, I'd love to have the opportunity. And the following day, I came across with in a Rolls Royce, with Chairman's Rolls Royce, to, to Liverpool to meet the one and only Bill Shanky. He has all everything. He's quick, he doesn't want to be beaten. He's just a great goalkeeper. He said, uh, we've watched you a lot, son. He said, we're impressed with what we've seen. He said, we think you can be in the big team, as he used to call it. He says, we've got Tommy Lawrence here. He said, Tommy's, you know, past his best now, 30 years of age, and uh, you keep improving, you'll be in the team within six months. Came back for pre-season training, um, and within a week, found out that Tommy Lawrence wasn't past his best, wasn't 30 years of age, he was 27 years of age, playing at the peak of his career, and I had to wait two and a half years to get in the team, so he did kid me a little bit, but it was worth the wait. I was a raw 18-year-old boy, you know, coming from Skegness, just coming to a big city like Liverpool was, was you know, massive for me. The first team was doing well, um, Tommy was playing exceptionally well, so quite right, it was impossible for me to get a chance in that team. And that's when really Joe Fagan, who was then the reserve team manager, he was brilliant in that last season because he knew I was frustrated and he knew it was difficult for me. Um, and he kept having little chats with me and telling me to be patient and the opportunity will come and when it does come, you've got to make sure you're ready to take it and make sure you are prepared for it. When we were 3-0 up with 20 minutes to go, I think it was, yeah, I thought it's going to take a lot for them to come back against us in the return leg. And then, of course, uh, in that last 20 minutes, Stevie Highway gave away a penalty and um, the World Cup player, Jupp Heynckes, took the penalty. I'd seen and heard that he, just, he did like to put them to my, to my right-hand side, so I thought, in this situation, I'm going to take a chance. As he, as he ran up, he hit it, and thankfully it went right, I went right, and managed to save it. Now, at that time, it still didn't seem a massive thing, because we were winning 3-0. But, of course, we went out to Munch and Gladbach for the second leg, and they had a midfield player called uh, Netzer, who was magnificent, and he just ran the game. We were 2-0 down in 20 minutes, we couldn't get the ball, we hung on for grim death, and somehow only lost the game 2-0, which meant, obviously, we won 3-2 on aggregate. But if I'd let the penalty in, then it would have been 3 all, and they would have won it on away goals. So all of a sudden, that penalty save, which seemed innocuous and just a little bit of personal glory for me, meant that we won the UEFA Cup. And all of a sudden, we had that confidence about ourselves that we, we could go on and win things. And uh, once we'd won that, obviously it gave us the confidence to go and win more and more because we had that belief in, inside the team that you know, had been put into us by, by Bill Shankly that we were the best. Bob, I remember his words, he just came in the dressing room and said, you know, nobody expected me to be here, I don't actually want to be here. But Bill has left and somebody has to take this on. But I'm not going to change anything. We're going to continue to do everything that Bill did and we just do it better. People were always questioning, what do you do? What's the success there? You know, what sort of training do you do? It makes you continue to, to be strong in the last 10 minutes of the game. How many games do you win in the last 10 minutes and things like that? And they would never believe you that actually 
all we did was play five a side and seven a side football. But the seven a side football was always played at a competitive pace that the coaching staff would not allow you to not play at match pace in those games. But it just taught you to pass the ball and keep the ball. And that's why we were successful. That's why we won so many games in the last 10 minutes because we had the ball, the ball more than the opposition. And we all know it's more tiring running around without the ball than it is with it. It was probably our best year in terms of we felt we were unbeatable. No matter who you put out against us, wherever it was, we had a chance of winning that game. I mean, of those 16 goals in 21 home games, we only conceded four. So, you know, that again was just unheard of in those days. I had such a magnificent team in front of me, then I didn't have many saves to make. But I hope that when I did have things to do, I did it for the good of the team and uh, for the good of the supporters as well. So uh, yeah, simple and effective, I think is probably the best way I'd talk about myself. I developed a, a focus and a concentration over the time I was there where uh, my wife would tell me, I would, I would tell you if she was sat here, I was not the nicest person in the world to be around on a match day um, because of I developed a, a focus and a concentration over the time I was there where uh, my wife would tell me I would, I would tell you if she was sat here I was not the nicest person in the world to be around on a match day um, because of, literally I'd wake up in the morning I would be oblivious to everything else that was there apart from concentrating on the game and shutting out however many thousand people were there, to the point that I used to get screaming headaches an hour after a game um, because of the concentration level that I'd got myself to and then coming down from that after a game used to give me headaches. Third European Cup final in Paris against Real Madrid. You win it 1-0. It really shouldn't get any better than that in football. Um, and I sat in the dressing room afterwards with all the mayhem that goes around winning um, a European Cup. And I had my cup of champagne in my hand and I just looked at it and it was just like another day at the office. And within half an hour of winning my third European Cup final medal, I decided that it was actually time that um, I needed to make a change because I'd always been fully motivated, always strived to be the best I possibly could and I thought well if I'm not on the ceiling for something like this then I need to go and challenge myself somewhere else. Initially it wasn't a difficult decision in that dressing room but obviously when I got home and I told my wife and my friends and everything and nobody could believe it and the longer it went on the more difficult it was getting to stick with it and obviously you know, there was a couple of times when I thought, am I making this right decision? Uh, because this is just such a magnificent place to play and, you know, I'm not going to get a better place than this to play, that's a certainty. Um, and I need to find a team that will be in Europe and has a chance yeah. of winning things before I do go anywhere. I'm not just going to go anywhere um, after this fantastic place. And luckily for me, Tottenham came in, who were an up-and-coming side, had just won the FA Cup and I just thought it was the right thing for me to do. It's something that will stay with me for the rest of my life. Um, we were 1-0 up at half-time, and it was Glenn Hoddle scored a spectacular volley. And obviously, I came down to run down to the cop the second half. And uh, When I first came to the game, I wasn't sure how I'd be treated because Although I'd have been lucky to have a fantastic career at Liverpool, I was the one who decided to leave. And I wondered how that would have gone down with Liverpool supporters. But I came out second half and I ran down to the cop and it's probably the most emotional I've ever been in football. I certainly had water in my eyes um, when I went down there. Um, and the cop had never been stupid because obviously I had missed the eyes and within 10 minutes we were 2-1 down. <laughs> so, um, but it was the most emotional time because, you know, I wasn't sure where it was going to turn out and I went down there and 
everybody in the stadium was applauding or cheering or chanting England's number one. It was special, special, special for me. I think I've always tried in my life whatever I've done to be the best at it. And uh, I hope the Liverpool fans will remember me for being somebody who was passionate for the football club, is still passionate for the football club. Loved every minute of it, loved the affiliation with the fans, and hopefully I gave them everything I had, and uh, hopefully it was enough to please them.